I hate long intros, man. Y'all can read the title. Let's get into it. I like singing. I like dancing. I like trains. <laughs> I'm recording this video after the Chicago game. It was a big win. We'll get into that last. Not too much this week. Not too much crazy. But he had a solid week going 2-1. and one. Let's get into the first game. So the first game we're going to be talking about is the game versus the Detroit Pistons. Now, I actually like the Detroit Pistons. I like the roster. Of course, Isaiah Stewart was out, which was actually big for the Heat because I actually think Isaiah Stewart is a really solid player. And I don't just like Isaiah Stewart because he tried to get LeBron because <laughs> I'm not a petty anti-LeBron guy since he left the Heat. But he's kind of a Heat culture guy. You know, all heart, all hustle great rebounder gritty defender type guy but outside of him of course they got some other really nice young pieces they got the Cade Cunningham and Killian Hayes their veteran Jeremy Grant who's also really good is only 27 but I also like Sadiq Bey a lot now Sadiq Bey balled out he hit like three threes in the first quarter he was going off and it kind of sucks because I remember on draft night in 2020 Sadiq Bey was falling and he fell all the way to 19 right before the heat picked Precious to two at 20. The Pistons also got Luka Garza who started that night because Isaiah Stewart was out. Now going into the draft I couldn't understand why Luka Garza wasn't higher on draft boards because he won the award for best center in all of college basketball twice. Well, supposedly because he's a really terrible defender, like really, really terrible. I liked him a lot. His college stats were ridiculous. He was averaging like 25 and 9 a game on super efficient shooting from three. I think Luca Garza is a baller, so he played really well in this game. And overall, I just really think the Pistons have a lot of nice young talent. But he got off to a sloppy start. I didn't like in the third quarter. Jimmy was passing up a ton of layups. He's done that for a few years now with the Heat. I just don't know why he does that. He's so much bigger and stronger than everybody else. I think he needs to be a little more selfish at times and kind of take the shots when he's in the paint even though he tries to spread the ball and get everybody involved which is something you want to see from a star player so I don't want to give him too much crap for that but it's the same thing with Bam since they're just a lot stronger than everybody else you'd like to see them go up more times than not but the fourth quarter came down to Tyler time again it has become a nightly occurrence Tyler Hero owns the fourth quarter he stopped the Pistons every time they were about to go on a run and he was huge for us really the number one reason why we won that game one question I have is where is Max Struess <laughs> he didn't play in that game versus Detroit or the second game against Minnesota I don't know why I haven't heard anything I'm not sure why Gabe was basically getting his minutes over him. Uh, well, see, I'm recording this after the Chicago game, and if y'all watched that game, you know we can call it the Gabe Vincent game. I think he scored like 15 points in the fourth quarter. Maybe Spolster had the vision. Maybe I didn't have the vision. But either way, I was just wondering why in the game versus Detroit and Minnesota, Max Strews didn't play. So transitioning off of that, we'll get into the next game, which was the loss versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. My first bullet point for this game just says F the refs in all caps, and I didn't just type the letter F. <laughs> I like to do that when I'm making notes during these games so I can remember the emotion that I felt so I can display it here when I'm recording these videos. But yeah, I mean, the Heat did not play good. Let me put that out there first. But the refs just completely screwed us. There were so many moving screens on Carl Anthony Towns that were not called. That led to really big buckets by the Timberwolves. But also, the Timberwolves just really couldn't miss. They hit tons of big shots. Specifically, Anthony Edwards just could not miss. I mean, this was another game where the Heat did get killed because they were switching literally everything. So Ant and the Timberwolves were just eating Duncan Robinson alive. But man, Edwards annoyed me so much. That dude is a baller. He's going to be a star in this league for a really long time and that's been clear since basically his rookie season and this game was no different a couple things annoy me though about him i mean some of this goes back to the refs too when they caught a double technical on him and jimmy that was stupid all jimmy did was take the ball from ant and then ant shoved him they both got double technicals. Why? Jimmy just took the ball to sit, then Ant shoved him, and they both get double teased. Jimmy didn't do nothing, man. That was such a trash call. I did not like seeing that at all. And then you had the Ant Edwards dunk on Gabe Vincent, which was definitely a charge. But the thing that got me mad about that is Ant stared down Gabe Vincent. He didn't get a technical. Now, again... <laughs> I don't like the taunting rule. You should be allowed to taunt as a player. It actually helps make the game pretty exciting. But they've caught technicals for way less than that. And I just didn't like how they didn't give him one because he straight up stared him down. Rightfully so, though. That dunk was nasty. And I had a couple boys hit me up that aren't he fans be like, oh, look, your boy got dunked on. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Gabe Vincent is not my boy. I've said many times that I don't think he's an NBA player, which makes me look so stupid because he carried us to a win versus the Bulls, but I'll get into that later. So yeah, although the refs were complete garbage, they weren't 100% the reason why we lost. The Heat did a bunch of stupid things that helped contribute. For example, Bam has no post game, none. He goes up so weak for somebody as big and strong as he is. Do a quick spin move, drop step something and go up strong. And also, Jimmy took zero shots in the fourth quarter, which was right after his encounter with that stupid fan and then with Ann Edwards. So that makes it clear that they kind of got in Jimmy's head, which is frustrating. Also not something I expected. I kind of thought they awoke the sleeping dog in Jimmy Butler, but instead they did kind of rattle him. I mean, I'm not too worried about it. Jimmy Butler's a big time player. He makes big time plays in rough environments. This was just kind of an off night for him. Shout out to me also though, because I did say in the last video that this game in Minnesota scares me because they haven't won in Minnesota in a while. And as streaks continues, I think it's been five games now. 
So we'll have to wait until next year. And of course, the third and final game this week that just concluded about 30 minutes ago was the huge win in Chicago versus the Bulls. This win was big for a few reasons. One, it shot us right back up to second place in East, which is nice to see. It puts us at 13 and seven after 20 games, which is big because 20 games is roughly a fourth of the season. So if you take 13 wins and multiply that by four, it puts us right at 52 wins, which is a really solid record. If you ask most Heat fans before the season, including myself, would we be happy with 52 wins? I would have taken that 10 times out of 10. So they are on pace for that. Even better considering that this is considered the roughest part of the schedule. Even though they did blow a lot of games they should win, definitely not going to complain. As far as the Bulls side of things for this game, it's nice to see that he kept Vucevic in check. Of course, he turns into a Hall of Fame versus the Heat, but he really didn't do much for the most part. It's really great to see my boy Derek Jones Jr. balling out. He had a lot of really nice plays. I don't even know if he missed a shot, to be honest. If you were a Heat fan and you don't like Derek Jones Jr., then you're not a Heat fan. Because I really don't think that exists. On the other hand, I'm nearly certain all Heat fans hate Alex Caruso <laughs> just because of all the flopping he did in the finals against us in 2020. And I still don't like Alex Caruso. I said on the Bobby Digital Sports podcast before that he has such a punchable face. No disrespect to Alex Caruso, although saying someone has a punchable face is really disrespectful. But he seems like a great guy. I listened to him on Duncan Robinson's podcast too. He's super cool, super chill. I just kind of have some fun because he knows he flops. I'm sure he'll admit it too, which is weird because the bullet point for this game is actually me trying to give him some credit. I'm jealous of Bulls fans. I'm jealous that they have Alex Caruso and we don't. I'm gonna come flat out and say it. When they signed Alex Caruso, a lot of people were making a big deal. I didn't really think it was too big a deal. I thought maybe he was overpaid. I didn't really think he did much besides, you know, provide some athleticism and hustle. But dude is a baller. First of all, he's an absolute menace on defense. And anytime he was guarding one of the Heat players, I was scared that they were going to turn it over. So I will give Alex Cruz some credit for turning into a really solid player. Even though, nah, I still don't, I still don't rock with you, fam. But like I mentioned earlier, it was great to see Max Truce finally come back and get some run. Don't know why he missed the last two games because he came back and balled right back out. I saw a stat on Twitter from Simon Sperling. He said the Heat are eight and one in games where Max Strews played over 18 minutes. That's why he's the Strews dad. He's such a handsome man, such a wet shot. Love Max Strews, man. And also, Jimmy, if you're watching this, man, first of all, what's up? How you doing, big fan? But also, why didn't you go to Struce night, man? I don't know if y'all seen the funny comment that Jimmy put on Max Struce's IG, but Max Struce was posting about Struce night at DePaul, and Jimmy just posted, ain't nobody going to no dumbass Struce night, which I thought was really funny. Again, this whole team's just funny in general, and they love each other, so it's cool to see. But going into the fourth quarter, this was a tight game neck and neck, and it came down to Kyle Lowry balling out, and even more so, Gabe Vincent, who scored like 15 points in the fourth quarter, 20 overall. Yeah, uh, if y'all have watched this channel before, on multiple occasions, I've said Gabe Vincent is not an NBA player. But over the last two weeks, he's proven me wrong. I haven't completely changed my mind yet. He's got to keep it up for me. But if he does, Gabe Vincent apology video coming soon. So yeah, big win for the Heat. Last thing I want to mention was when Deadman got ejected. I was mad. He kicked a chair and like a cushion flew like two feet behind into the row. And the ref said he got ejected for a hostile act. Like dude threw a cushion. Come on, you could take a pillow. Throw it at me as hard as you can. I'm not going to budge. It's a cushion. It's a pillow. It ain't going to hurt no one, man. Like, I didn't like that ejection. But the funniest thing is I saw on Twitter from Jeremy Taché after the game that Spo actually made Deadman the player of the game, which is really funny because Deadman didn't do anything except get his offensive or defensive three-second violation that seems to be happening at least twice a game from Deadman now. He's got to work on that. But still, I always love the mechanic. So shout out to my dog for being named the player of the game by Spo. But yeah, that's all the games from this past week. I'll take the 2 and one record. Nothing crazy. But next game is a big one, man. The Denver Nuggets are coming to town on Monday night. The Jokic brothers better not run into you, Don and It's going to be a good one, man. I'm hype. I'm going to get some good food. I'm going to sit down right before game time and get ready for the bloodbath. The Denver Nuggets do not know what they're walking into, but I'm going to let them know right now. They're walking into a buzzsaw, okay? The Miami Heat are not losing on Monday versus Denver Nuggets, okay? I'm giving the witness guarantee y'all could book it. But y'all will hear me talk about it in next week's video. If y'all new here, I record videos every weekend and talk about all the games from the previous video to this one. Make sure y'all subscribe so you don't miss it. And now that the video is over, if you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like as well. It is much appreciated in helping the channel grow. We're growing quick here and I just love to see it. It's so encouraging to see all the love. So thank y'all again. But before I go, I just want to give a shout out to the official Miami Heat Discord. I joined it a few weeks back and it's been really awesome. I've had a great time in there. There's great people in there. You can really talk about anything Heat related. There's some topics for non-Heat related stuff. It's really just a great time. So if you're a Heat fan on the internet, which you are, you're watching this video, make sure you go ahead and join the Miami Heat Discord. The link for that will be at the top of the description. But other than that, there's one final thing I have to tell y'all. I've been lying to y'all the whole time. I'm not at the apartment. This was just a green screen again. I got y'all again. I got y'all two weeks ago and I got y'all again. Yeah, I'm back.
for Thanksgiving back in the childhood home. I hope the green screen worked. If not, y'all got a very terrible background for this entire video, but it worked good last time. So I'm hoping it worked good again, but you never know because I got it at Party City. Either way, I hope y'all enjoyed because you may never see me again, but who knows? You'll find out next week or you won't. I'll see y'all later. I need bigger stay, 80s lamb. I so tank when the pain again. I escape from these famous lands. When it's too much in the wheel dungeon. And what if I know? Financially free be my idol. Probably get it than I lie low. Shook ones wish that I die slow. Hold up, one letter fade me. Got an impact with elevation. When a nigga make it leave a foundation. Hand out keys, high education.